thank you for responding to our call. Thank you. As you know, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was inducted in the office 2006 and we've been conducting hearing in all the 15 counties. Based on this hearing, some allegations were made against you. And we are happy that you are here today to address yourself to this concern. And besides that, our peer up investigation covered from 1979 to 2003. And the commission wants to know the violation that occurred from 1979 to 2003 that will be able to help Liberia as a country to foster reconciliation and unity. Because in the absence of truth telling, it can never be any genuine reconciliation. So based on that, we'd like to welcome you again and thank you for coming. But before you begin, we would like to introduce the commissioners here present. On my immediate right, the Commissioner Sheikha Kuma Kone. On my left is Reverend Ambassador Jared Como, and I'm Commissioner Omosila. The other commissioners will be joining us soon. We are sorry for the delays because of the traffic that is in town now. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, I initially thought to speak to the commission extemporaneously in the absence of a written communication to me. However, on the scheduled date of my presentation, February 5, 2009, at 10.30, while sitting in the hall, I initially received a written invitation. The written invitation specifically dealt with two issues. One, my knowledge and connection with the GOL militia called Mountain Lion Brigade and quoting the document it states and I quote the TRC investigation and witnesses testimonies during the hearing have revealed allegations of gross human rights and international humanitarian law violations committed by you as a member of government of Liberia militia mountain lion brigade in 2003 in Maryland County while serving as superintendent of the county. A continue specifically testimonies and allegations also speak of your role and complicity in the Glara massacre, destruction of public property and arbitrary arrests." Unquote. The GL Militia Martin Lion Brigade component caught me by surprise for this was the first time I heard about this militia. The second was no surprise because this was the continuation of Dan Marais versus Anthony Dempster Brown et al. This time, the et al has a face, which started early February and March 2004. Before I address these two issues and many others, let me first state what I believe. And I quote. The soil of this nation remains wet beneath our feet with irrevocable blood lost of innocent Liberians who shielded us from death that today we are witnesses of yesterday. We are alive today because they are dead. We have to give meaning to the loss of blood if justice must be done to the past so that we do not revisit these sad chapters of our history on the future of this nation. I have come to remain not to remain entrenched in a state of denial. Neither have I come to speculate or incriminate anybody. I've come to face my past with soberness and honesty, yet this comportment, comportment could be hijacked if respect isn't reciprocated. I'm from the school of thought that believes that what should be sought for in this TRC process is what went wrong and or what went right that have brought this nation to self-destruction. I become disappointed when the drive to the truth borders on who was wrong and or who was right. This has held many that came before me 
defending the actions instead of speaking to the issues of yesterday meaning that everyone wants to be the father of success because failure is a bastard child but like there is no day without night so we must all embrace success and failure alike i've been invited to this public hearing not to relaunch myself and whatever career i may have neither do i want to dwell on the person then arised by those who don't like me nor those that admire me i want to deal with the issues that have singled me out amongst 3.5 million liberians in this nation that have come to your attention i'm sure it is clarity and the truth you seek my distinguished chairman commission commissioners before i become yours for the asking let me present certain facts one i returned to maryland county in 1992. two i was acting chairman of lab in 1985 and as a result in prison for 40 days three in 1993, the forces for LPC carried out a massacre, eliminating a complete generation of the elderly. Four, in 1995, I was traditionally appointed speaker of the Global National Council. Fifth, on February 11, 1996, I revealed this to the world on Focus on Africa. Sixth, in October 1996, I became chairman of the NPP chapter in Maryland. Seven in late 1999, I became superintendent of Maryland County. In 2003, I became Minister of Internal Affairs. In 2006, I was named Ambassador Large and Special Envoy. In 2008, I became subject of this accusation at the TRC hearings. A. Mr. Maximilian Ja and Amputu accused me of driving people from the port of Harbor to a large ship to dock. B. Mr. Solotier and Madam Martha Watkins accused me of a link to a massacre in River G, specifically in Graro. And C. Commissioner John Stewart, in one of his famous style of cross examination, indicted me of breaking a bridge in River G. I would like to address the Martin Lion Brigade. As I was to address the Commissioner on the 5th at 10 30, I finally, when I finally received um, my written invitation, I asked the Chairman Verdia for an excuse to visit the TRC website. Indeed, again, it was my faceless accuser's solo tier. At the end of my presentation, you will understand why I say faceless. The first time I've ever been asked, confronted, or heard anything about Mountain Lion Brigade was when the TRC invitation asked me to comment on. There was no GRL militia operating in Maryland County style and name Mountain Lion Brigade that I know or heard about during my tenure as superintendent of Maryland County. I've never ever been a member of any group called Mountain Lion Brigade. Since I have been asked to comment on this organization as a member, it would be of interest to me to know who was its leader. I will have to rely on the TRC and my accuser to provide more information. What I read on the website of the TRC has provided nothing more than the begin. The Glaro The Glaro Massacre. Uh, it, it comes on a subtitle from me that I refer to as HDM Arise versus Solo BTS Senior and Martha Watt and all. Kindly bear with me because this has been a long, long event. I need to provide certain information and do certain submission to this commission so that it can be fully clothed to provide the requisite synthesis so that the librarian people can know the truth from the lies. Early 2004, February and March, I listened to two radio broadcasts on Radio Veritas and 
Star Radio, where excerpts actuality of the voice of Anthony Dempster Brown, then chairman of the so-called Independent Commission on Human Rights, was placed was played, accusing a senior government official, which then Marais, Minister of Internal Affairs, and Mr. Abbas Fawaz, President, CEO of Maryland Wood Processing Industry, MWPI, of involvement in a massacre of allegedly 369 persons in River Gina. These were followed by a series of press conferences held <coughs> by Anthony Dempster Brown. And I'd like to submit this into evidence. I'm going to give you the copies. The first one is from volume 15, number 111 of the news newspaper, River G officials confirm massacre. The second one is uh, the news newspaper, Tuesday the 2nd March the 4th, volume 15, number 139, uh, Human Rights Commission plays tip, tip tomorrow. Uh, and the other one is also from the news newspaper, Human Rights Commission plays tip tomorrow, again. Um, this one is from uh, the New Broom newspaper. Minister Marais accused Anthony Dempster Brown of blackmail <coughs> extortion. And the New Librarian newspaper. I've attached all of these for your reference and I'll give them to you. We sought appointments with Anthony Dempster Brown as first options. Anthony Brown insulted me on the telephone after visiting his office twice without meeting him. So on June 14, 2005, I wrote the Solicitor General, Councillor Theophilus Gould at that time, complaining of the press utterances of Anthony Dempster Brown and requested the Justice Ministry to invite Anthony Brown for a conference and I've marked this as six. It's a lengthy thing, but please let me read excerpts of it. Councillor Theophilus C. Gould, Solicitor General, Republic of Liberia, and this was June 14, 2005 case history. In early March 2004, I was elected to a series of articles in the news, newspaper in which Chairman of the Independent Human Rights Commission, Anthony Dempster Brown, accused me, H. Dan Marais, of link to a large massacre in River Jean County. I decided not to say a word then because I felt that the people may have, have quoted Mr. Brown wrongly. However, I was proven wrong when I heard an excerpt of Mr. Brown's allegation on radio Veritas during the period on a review. I'm here with providing a transcript of Mr. Brown's interview. Journalist, what is that your so-called witness cannot be produced for the press? Mr. Brown, at present, it will be impractical for themselves to go to the press and talk. They will be putting themselves at security risk. So we have them around here and they are always around. And you notice from the speaking, they are not, they did not call their names, but when the proper time reaches, they will be available. Well, this act that was committed was not a war crime because during the time the crime was committed, there was no war and there will be, they will be charged with murder. Journalist. What are you waiting for now to start the process? Mr. Brown, well, I will not tell you because there is a maneuver, maneuvering going on now to arrest these guys. And this continue, let me go to, because I'm submitting this document to you, I'm gonna re accept it. Let me go to the last of it all. A journalist, how do you reconcile the fact that you mentioned concluding the investigation and still gathering evidence? Brown. If you listen to our previous statement, we said that we concluded our investigation. On Sunday, June 12, 2005, Mr. Brown again granted an interview to Star Radio. And I'm going to attach this accept, the excerpts rather, for you to see. I'll make a reference to my first letter and that to the Solicitor General. The Solicitor General in reply wrote Mr. Brown, June 15, 2005, Anthony Dempster Brown, Moreover, Liberia. Mr. Brown, 
a dash here to a copy of a dash here to is a copy of a complaint we have received against you over the signature of R. Dan Marais, Minister of Internal Affairs, which is self explanatory. In view of the above, you are cited for a conference on Friday, June 17, 2005, at the hour of 4 p.m. Your cooperation is anticipated. <clears throat> Why awaiting the reply? At the best start there, I wrote the caucus. The assemblyman from River G, because the information being been spread, information about was that uh, Mr. Brown got the got his his information from those who came from River G. So then I wanted a larger, a larger uh, a meeting of people. So on so on March on March ten. 2005, a meeting was convened at the Mavi Suni School in Clara Town with 64 persons in attendance. And you will be uh, surprised to know some of those persons who were there, who were there rather. And let me just go to list a few of them. So this included the chairman of the caucus, Mr. Nepan Situ. Honorable Wiley Wa, senior from Sabo, Stephen S. We are senior from Tiempo, Jalekwe from Tiempo, um, I'm trying to find names that you remember. Uh, also, at this meeting was Mr. Sulu Brown, Sulu, and Mr. Sulu T.S. Senior, um, Mr. Kamina Wise, and I. We attended this meeting, and I'm going to submit to you because this is lengthy. Lengthy. The findings and the report in the own writing of the individuals who attended this uh, this uh, conference. I also didn't stop there. I wrote the Minister of Defense on June 20, 2005. And I've marked that as Exhibit 11, uh, no, as Exhibit 12. And I'd like to re access on that as well. Mr. Minister, first of all, let's Honorable Daniel Chair, Minister of Defense, June 20, 2005. Mr. Minister, in early March 2004, my attention was drawn to a series of articles in the dailies and utterances <laughs> made by Mr. Dempster Brown as to massacres in the one Mr. Abba Fawaz, the owner of MWPI. Mr. Brown claimed at that time that the investigation was done jointly by your ministry and the Independent Human Rights Commission. We await to see the reports so that we will address ourselves accordingly. This, was not been the, this has not been the case since then. One year later, three, one year, three months later, Mr. Brown again resurrected the accusation of our involvement in a massacre. As a minister in government and being tied to this heinous act for two reasons. One, perhaps because I work for the former government of Liberia and therefore a corporate of collective guilt of crimes against humanity. Or Mr. Dempster Brown is embarking on an attempt to ridicule the NG NTGL for the sake of money and popularity at the expense of all character. He is attempting to portray an image that this government has humanitarian criminal, a leftover of a satila gang who is refusing to prosecute, who is refusing to who it is refusing to prosecute. Though a case has not been established, I'm refusing to become a scapegoat of Mr. Brown. Mr. Minister, if there has been an investigation that links me specifically by your ministry to a massacre in River G, please provide me with a copy. We didn't receive anything. Then we move to our lawyer as well. <clears throat> I asked him to write the Minister of Justice. And so on December 2nd, 2005, Councillor Cabinan, uh, Councillor James E. Pierre wrote the Minister of Justice, then Cabinet Janet. 
Dear Minister Janet, in March 2004, articles were published in the news newspaper in which Anthony Dempster Brown, then chairman of the Independent Human Rights Commission, accused our client, Mr. Abbas Fawaz, and the Honorable Dan Marais of complicity in massacre, which allegedly occurred in River G County in 2003. Predicating on this allegation, Honorable Marais filed a formal complaint with the Solicitor General denying them. Although Anthony Brown has published these reckless and vicious charges, and despite a request for the Solicitor General for him to substantiate them, he has failed to do so. We are informed that the Liberian government is conducting an investigation into the River G incidents, and we, we would be most grateful were you to inform us whether the results of the investigation link our clients <clears throat> in any way to these massacres. On December 9, uh, the Minister of Justice then, Councillor Kabina Janet, replied, Dear Councillor Pierre, I acknowledge, I mean, acknowledgement is made of your letter of December 2nd, 2005, informing us of the accusation made by Anthony Debston Brown against your clients of complicity in massacre which occurred in River G County in April 2003. In response to your request, we wish to inform you that the Liberian government is personally conducting a detailed and thorough investigation into the facts and circumstances of these massacres and at the completion of the investigative exercises, the findings will be submitted to the Chairman of the National Transitional Government. It is our expectation that we will respond to your letter after submission of the report to the Chairman. Again, again on January 9, 2006, Minister Janet then wrote, we refer to a letter of December 2nd, 2005 on behalf of your client and our response of December 9, AD 2005, in which we advise that we will revert to you after the completion of the investigation and the submission of the findings to the chairman of the NTGL. You are hereby advised that a report of the investigation of the investigation commissioned by the Liberian government into the massacre in River G, which occurred in April 2003, has been submitted to us and we are forwarded seeing to His Excellency C. Judy Bryant, Chairman of the National Transition Government of Liberia. On the basis of the foregoing, we confirm the report as submitted on June 4, 2006, does not indicate that your clients were involved or implicated in any of the incidents we have full stop. We are providing you with a copy of the report as a matter of public policy. And that report is here, sir. It's lengthy. I'm not going to read it, but the conclusions are all here. Now, I will skip some of these, maybe uh, that when you are, when it's question and answer time, I'll be able to refer to some of them. But let me go back to my document that I prepared. <clears throat> the TRC has repeatedly, has said repeatedly that our invitation to clarify issues raised by so-called witnesses was not to confront our accusers. I'm convinced that there are some commissioners who have come to this process with an honest objective that is to get to the truth. Others have few animosity, vendetta to settle, and to exact the so-called victor justice on indicted criminals who work for previous government. Our accuser definitely presented a thesis to this commission, and our invitation provides the accused the opportunity to present the antithesis, truth or falsehood. The synthesis is strictly in the court of the Liberian people. They are the victims and the victors. They are the only ones that can say what they heard were satisfactory enough to pursue or close these proceedings. Some commissioners have already anointed themselves the synthesizers. 
I pray that the reasons and meaning for the wanton mayhem and destruction that was visited upon the Liberian people and punctuated our sanity as a civilized nation don't get by on the altar of confrontation. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my, it is my own alienable rights under the organic laws of nature and our constitution to due process. In 2004, when this issue of a massacre was raised and our alleged links as stated in my presentation, we went from the Justice Ministry to the Defense Ministry to on mail to the Catholic Secretariat. That letter is also here for redress. Anthony Dempsey Brown claimed then that his commission was the product of the CPA and as such could not appear or present his case to the Justice Ministry, but rather asked me to go to court. Again, today, as a face, as a face has been given to my accusers, the TRC has stepped in when I filed a lawsuit against Martha Watkins and Solo Tier by providing its lawyer to defend my accusers. The legal team of the TRC has sent filed two motions for dismissal. They have been rejected by the courts. The documents are here, sir. This is the entire dossier. I did not take the TRC to court, nor is my case a subject of these hearings. This case started since 2004, and Antonio Brown repeatedly refused to present his witnesses. This has been a subject of several investigations that have concluded my innocence as presented to this commission. That Watkins and Tears and Tear have come forth and exposed themselves for the first time as the witnesses of Anthony uh, Brown. Please permit me, therefore, to have my long awaited justice. If the only means provided to me to face my, my accusers is blocked by the TRC, and the TRC does not provide that forum, then I ask what happens to my human rights. I would like to speak to Martha Watkins and all, just a few minutes. In early November 2008, a syndicate was broken by the Liberian National Police in Zwejo, Grand Jeda County when Save the Children Fund, UK, had raised an alarm of a national and international conspiracy to smuggle children out of Liberia. 26 children were rescued from the gang leader who had taken these children from the parents in River G and been escorted to Monrovia. These children were taken from the parents under the disguise of sending them to school. These evil minds, I understand, have done seen earlier to the Ivory Coast during the heat of the war under the same disguise. Today, some parents are told that their children are in refugee camps and going to school. The gang leader was arrested and charged with human and children trafficking at the magisterial court in Zwerdru. This was on the news for almost a week. I, 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 I'm sure you've heard about it. And guess what? My distinguished chairman, commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, who is the gang leader? Martha Watkins and all. The same Martha Watkins and all. I submit. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness, for your testimony. Thank you. <coughs> before we begin to ask you questions, I would like for you to please verify some information we have within the commission concerning your profile. There's no date of birth. If you don't mind, could you give to us that? I did not submit a profile. 
yeah we have some information that's what i'm saying so you can please verify them well again i always say that um, my date of birth is for me yes, for and i wish to keep it where it is and again madam my commission as i always say can we go into the issues for which i've been invited here well we know the issues is important that's why we gave you the opportunity because you know all right then what i'll do for the commission is when i leave from here i will give you my personal profile so you can attach it to your file from what we have okay. yes i will do it strike it off from my computer and give it to you that will be easier all right then of course you can you can use that personally okay in terms of membership and alliance ambassador at large that's correct yes ambassador large and special envoy okay national patriotic front of liberia national patriotic party of Liberia. national patriotic party of liberia national patriotic party okay Former superintendent of Maryland County. Former superintendent of Maryland County. Former minister of internal affairs. Former minister of internal affairs. Thank you very, very much for that clarity. Thank you. And you were in superintendent of Maryland during the course of the conflict. Yes, sir. And from what we gather based on some witnesses have, that have come and testified. Yeah. You try to address some of these issues based on the mirror, you know, letter that were written to Mr. Brown through the Solicitor General and former Minister of Justice during 2005. Yeah. However, during the two hours hearing, to be specific, we talk about Martha Watkins. She did testify before the commission mm -hmm. that though you were superintendent in Maryland County, but you were frequent in River G. And during that time, at one point in time, her husband was arrested and she went to you personally to intervene so that her husband can be released. Mm -hmm. Can you clarify that? Can you comment? Well, I want, let me clear two things. <coughs> Maryland County is almost like a peninsula surrounded by water the only outlet of the maryland county by road goes through river g grand jire and out into monrovia and so it's true i've gone through uh river g grand jire and other counties on many occasions on my way to monrovia okay second thing people may have met me and pleaded to me on many issues many it could have been one of those. I'm not fully denying that somebody may not have pleaded to me on any issues. As I said, I've come to you to speak the truth, to speak to my past. But I cannot recollect speaking directly to Amato Watkins on the release of her husband. And again, not in Maryland County, in River G County. Because you say she said she met me in River G County, right? Yes. Yeah. So you are frequenting River G County, and along with General Sumo, Zico Dani, Peswa. As superintendent of Maryland County, I don't. It, will you give some uh, qualification to the individuals you're making reference to? Because I want to be careful in how I approach these issues. I again will say, I frequented River G County, Grand Jeter County, Sino County because that that route was the only one on to Monrovia. I had to go through that. There was no ship, there was no airplane to fly out of Maryland County. So yes, indeed, I went through there. Yeah, but the name so let me account for myself. Okay. And I can account for myself of yes, visiting these counties on my way to Monrovia. I had to stop over. But now, agree that you are speaking for yourself. Yeah. Did you play any leadership role in in, in River G? Gave instruction to government forces or so? Again, I always smile when I hear this. People try to make me bigger than I am. 
River G County, I had absolutely no control over River G County. I was the superintendent of Maryland County. And that's what my mandate uh, calls for me to be and exercise whatever authority I had, but not in River G County. Okay, while you're in River G, did you encounter uh, Zico Daniel and Peswa, if you remember? Who are these two? They were part of the government militias. Again, I don't know about government militia. How do I tell you, madam, I incriminate somebody of being a part of government militia? If I tell you they were part of government militia, I must go further to prove that they were part of government militia. Thank you very much. Reverend Cuomo will begin the questioning. But you said something about, I think the chairman will address himself to it, but I just wanted to comment on the, the issue about Martha Watkins. We as the commission is aware when you issue a rate against Martha Watkins. But it's the commission policy that testimony made before the commission cannot be used against the person in the court of law. It was not the testimony we made reference to, madam. It was a series of events. Uh, for example, if you hire from me somebody name and I've been after the person and an opportunity has come that I know who the person is, then of course, then of course we take the appropriate action. So it was a series of, yes, a series of events and activities from 2004. So if you see the, the lawsuit here, it's this quite clearly, Horatio Dam arise of the city of Monrovia versus Solobi, TSC, and Martha Watkins, and all, also, also of the city of Monrovia. For Lada. Thank you. I'll stop here for now. Thank you. So there's no microphone there. I think the microphone is across there. Oh, okay. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your presentation. Um, as you know, the commission is concerned about understanding what truly happened to see how we can reconcile our past and build a better future for all of us. Um, I noticed that there are several things. For example, currently I hear you are Ambassador at Large in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, also, I see here that you're a member of the National Patriotic Front of Liberia. Wrong. National Patriotic Party. So were you ever a member of the MPFL? Prior to it becoming an MPP, I was not a member of the National Patriot Front of Liberia, uh -huh. but I was a sympathizer of the National Patriot Front of Liberia. Okay. We speak to the truth. Not a member, but a sympathizer. So it means that you were not part of the revolution that brought the transition to the country from 89 onward and now you were just sympathizing with their cause no i wasn't a part of it let me let me add yes sir for clarity um as i said i returned to maryland county in 1990 uh, uh, let me see the exact date when i got there i was engaged in business as a businessman and while there some well-learned lawyers, please be to the ashes, uh, Councillor Hall Baidio and others asked me, including the late African Dennis, asked me to establish the Liberal Action Party. And that's why I said as acting chairman first. Yeah. If you notice, that's the reason why I got arrested, I spent Christmas and New Year in jail 2004 after the butter invasion. But I was not a member of the National Patriot, the front of Liberia. Yes, I sympathize with it, but not a member. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let me just go through the total investigation period to see an overview of your situation, if you don't mind. Yeah. We started from 79 to 85. Uh, where were you basically in Liberia, outside of Liberia? 
Well, yeah, part of part Liberia, part Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. Okay. And during that time, after the coup took place, um, were you like in a situation of running away, or were you working with the 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 PRC, the the those government at that time prior to the election? No, I was just a simple businessman. You were a simple uh, businessman. Yeah, you were you were add to your record uh, that. Uh, I was the first broker, rubber broker in Maryland County. When Firestone closed, I bought rubber a pound for 30 cents. At that time, Firestone bought at 15 cents. I'm the first rubber broker. And I bought for a company that was located on Randall Street, uh, where uh, Lafayette Morgan worked. They called themselves Ophi, and the head of that institution was Mark Clavin. So, I've been buying rubber for a very long time. So that yes. means during that time when the revolution took place and the country was under the control of the um, Redemption Council people, you were just buying rubber, buying and selling rubber? Yeah, doing business the... in and out of Liberia. Maryland, that... Ivory Coast border? Yeah, Maryland, Ivory Coast. Yeah. Okay. Did you suffer any great losses during that time of our history? Yeah. Personal losses, somebody died, family members? Yes. My house was burned down to the ground, mm. completely. In Moroga? No, in Maryland. Also oh, the extension in Maryland. Okay. Yeah, because you covered a period up to 1985. I was in Maryland then. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, I was in Maryland then. Okay. Now, prior during the time of the coup, prior to the coup, what was your situation? You're still in Maryland. No. 1979. Mm, no, no, no. I was here. I was here in Morovia. Morovia. Yeah. So what carried you to Maryland then? After the coup itself, you decided to relocate? After the coup, I attempted to go abroad. Mm -hmm. And I went home to tell my mother. I'm the only son of my mother. My father has many children. I'm the only son. And I went to tell her that I was going away. And she said to me that, you're the only son. I'm not well. And if I get sick, get worse, and die, who will bury me? When you're in America, you don't come back. And I told her, I said, Mom, that's not the case. I'm going to come back. And she persuaded me to stay. I stay. And I remember this vividly, that a friend, Pete, Yancey and others were then going over to the Ivory Coast for the celebration, I think, of the first or second uh, Redemption Day or something of that sort. And I went across with them. I met one Siddiqui Kibbe, who was a businessman. Siddiqui offered to give me some cement. And that's how I brought my first 100 bags of cement back into Maryland, <coughs> made some money, and became so sweet. And I continued to import cement from Cote d'Ivoire. I became a big importer later on. That's the story. Mr. Kibbe is still alive? Yeah, Kibbe is still alive. I think the last time he came to Monrovia, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, he has expanded his business. He owned Asha Nimori, these long buses that travel from Tabu to uh, um, Abidjan. Okay, so before you went back to visit your mother, what was your situation in Monrovia? Were you working with the government? Were you a private businessman? Were you no, a student? No, just one of those long of student activists. Oh, so you're a student activist? Yeah. You're one of those that felt that the time had come for the yeah. change of government, like Talbot's situation? Of course. I don't deny that. Could you give us an overview? Some, you know, what group were you with? Were you just on the campus of LU or where? Well, I always like doing? to do this. Apologize to history, to the events of history. It's ugly, uh, and it's, that's something that I want to remember. We have not achieved anything. We can look back to what we said we wanted to do. And that's the reason why, I mean, I was not asked to discuss these issues. That's the reason why I have not added it to my, to my testimonies. Because I will have presented one letter I wrote my friend and big brother, uh, Bacchus Marches, late Bacchus Marches. And I said to him, you said in this newspaper article that you cannot apologize. I said, please, 
You're not apologizing for yourself, big brother. You're apologizing to the events of history. If you decide to move a pit of water from one point to another, and mistakenly you spill water on somebody, are you too big to say, I didn't mean this, you were not my target, and I'm sorry? If you wanted to propel Liberia into the 21st century of democracy, and doing that process will hurt people, are we so big? Or can we continue to live in a state of denial and refuse to apologize to the events of history? I'm not one of those. I've apologized to history. I've apologized to the mishap in my youthful exuberance. I did a lot of things, and I wish to apologize. For that. And I will make mention of that in my concluding statement. Okay. So, were you a member, though, of the PPP at that time? For no, example, I was a member of the Truby Party. Oh, so you're a Truby Party member? Yeah, we were went. You? We went for in this internal change. We wanted to make a change. And today, as I listen to what is being said here, and hear some of my brothers who were vehemently opposed to the Truby Party, and everything is too far to come and praise uh, William Richard Talbot. That's an insult to the to the member of William Richard Talbot. You don't do that. You don't do that. I hear this over and over again. Uh, you know, for us. So I like to say, when I left the Truby Party, one other party I joined was the very Action Party because I saw the Action, action Party as a party of lawyers, people who wanted to bring about a change in this country. And so we went through that, you know. Uh, and again, I wish not to indict them. I wish that we all can remember that we owe Mother Liberia a lot, and the best way we can address Mother Liberia issue is to speak to the truth. We had heard that during that period there was a, a series of potential coups in the making underground. Uh, they talk about this right-wing, two-party based group that wanted to see a change from Talbert. They talk about the left-wing group in that same party. They talk about the PPC. They talk about the military wing of the PPC. So where would you classify yourself if you were looking back? Were you like pro-Talbert system or were you one of those that wanted to see a change from within? that you just were iterating to us? And what were you all doing to carry out that change? Was it going to be something you thought violence would be necessary? Or did you feel that there was a way you could have done it through ideological or other political means? Well, there are two things. Let me say that I was a member of the Pressure Jewels. Uh, we believe in what William Richard Talbot said and what he wanted to do. Because for the first time, I saw myself helping young people to move around the country into Kakata is where we had one of our conferences in Kakata to hold a youth conference to discuss the future of Liberia. So I was a part, the first time I ever attended uh, an inaugural address was from an invitation extended to me by the late William Richard Talbot. All right, so I felt a part of him. Though in that process, we did a lot. There was something in this country, let me digress a bit, that was referred to as the traditional oligarchy that we went after, we thought it was not right. And in my naivety then, as a young man, I supported it. And what was this traditional oligarchy? I was witness in school once, high school, when a student you know, why in class we heard the drums around the, the classroom? And we wonder what was going on. But they had come from, for, for one of my, my classmates to make him chief of a village. And we pleaded, they collected him and carried him. And that was the end of his schooling. But what was important when we went after what we call the traditional oligarchy, oligarchy, where there was this system where you, as you must come from a particular family line before you became chief in this country. It may have, it may have had rather its its uh, disadvantages, but I can assure you that we have not replaced that traditional oligarchy with anything in this country, and that's why we had the first coup d'état. And scripted because when we took the chiefs from there, people who were supposed to be respected, who were supposed to be versed in leadership, 
and we told them we're going to submit them to elections. Not the first coup d'etat, but uh, 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 the civil crisis, where anybody could just walk into the village. And, you know, excuse us, this is no disrespect to my traditional people, where some of them are, 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 are drug smoker who became chiefs, who didn't even stay in the villages in town. These people were no more respected. So people could go to villages in town and don't ask anybody any question. We decided to have them elected. We placed that in the constitution. What has happened since that time? There has been no comprehensive elections of chiefs in this country, and there will be no comprehensive uh, 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 elections of chiefs in this country until we recognize the fact that Article Three of our Constitution provides, and I quote: "Liberia is a sovereign, unitary state, divided into counties for administrative purposes, and not political purposes, and not e uh, election purposes." That was the spirit and intent of the frame of our constitution. Honor that, where you gave the, the, the Ministry of Internal Affairs the authority, because in the context of that part of the constitution, the Ministry of Internal Affairs was acknowledged. It's a long story, sir. It's a long story, you know. Uh, and I hope you, I could find time to address it. When were you Minister of Internal Affairs? During what period of time in our history? Come again, sir. You were Minister of Internal Affairs at one time, 2000, right? 2003-2006. 2003-2006. 2003-2006. 2006. Okay. Last question with regard to that period, the first period. When the coup took place, uh, do you have anything you would like to add to, uh, to our understanding of that coup? Do you have any first-hand well, knowledge of anything? What caused it? Who was behind it? Uh, Etc. Etc. Well, uh, Mr. Co uh, Mr. Coburn, right? Yes. Uh, let me add this controversial twist to this, and I hope I'm wrong. The first coup d'état in this country was not staged by Samuel Doe. The first coup d'état was staged by us during the rest riot. Those who were around will remember we had no government. Mr. Tauber left this country. We could not sit and decide on what we wanted to do. It took the Guinean contingent to come and secure the executive mansion for Mr. Tauber to come back. I hope I'm wrong, but I think that was when the first coup d'etat was staged, but we did not take advantage of it. That is the controversial twist. I stand corrected. <laughs> All right, moving on to 85 to 91. Say? The time. 85 to 91. Mm -hmm. That means the election, uh, the new constitution was drafted, yeah. and the election took place. You were in Maryland County doing your business trading. Yeah. So what happened? Did you come back in town and no, try I was to engage acting, the society no, no. or what? I was acting chairman of uh, the Trooper Party, I, told, I mean, of uh, LAP, I told you then. Okay, so your, ran, your party ran for the election, during that election period, 85? Yes. And your loss? Okay. No, we didn't. What happened? <laughs> you know the story. Elections were rigged. <laughs> no, I'm just being objective to understand. The, the, elections were, the elections were rigged. Oh, I see. Okay. And I so, paid for it 40 days in jail. I see. Yeah. And I, again, I said to you in my open statement, I don't want to indict people here, but we know who put us in jail, for what reasons we went to jail. Okay, with that understanding, as a strong lab party member, and the elections uh, being rigged, what did you do then? What was the decision, the action plan for LAP now and its people? Is well, there any link to what happened to Kuwampa? Sir, decision? I felt disappointed too because promises made to me were never carried out. The first question I asked, peace be to his ashes, Hall by the African and Dennis, Dr. J. Bolton Williams. Gentlemen, I have withdrawn from politics. I don't want to be a part of politics anymore. When did you do that? When did you withdraw? Well, right Please after go. the coup, I decided that I continue to do my business. Don't get involved in anything. In the Kuwampa coup? Yeah, not the Kuwampa coup, this entire coup, because we were being haunted. We decided, my mother called me and sat me down and said, you're the only son. Don't get involved in this thing. And I told her, I'm not going to get involved in it anymore. Okay, but you did though. And so, yes, I did. I regret it. I did. I disobey my mother and regret it. Okay. So now here you are, the chair of this party that was uh, that felt that the the election was rigged and 
people say there's a link between them and the Kuwampa's invasion. Yeah. So can you put light on these things for us? Yes, now in Maryland, what happened is this. We said that because after stuffing the ballot box in Maryland to the extent that, you know, there was a guy from a place they called Barobo, you know, they couldn't get close to Barobo to stop, stop, stop. And so they had to declare this guy winner. And so we said, look, if we, you can't declare the rest of the other guys winner. We can take this one. And I was one of those persons who wrote then that this person of Liberia who also won a senator position, that lab was not taking up any seat in that government. And it was clear I was one of those persons involved. And so I was punished during the 1985 party so when you say that, the way you say it, there's two ways to look at it. I mean, so you're admitting that, yes, you all were involved in staging the coup against Dole, how, or are you saying that the people say I was? Uh, how, uh, oh man, how, as I always say, the road to Morocco doesn't lead through Maryland County. When you get to Maryland County, the next place you're going to see. We're not involved. Simple businessmen, we just, did not, we just did not agree. And I tell you, let me tell you my disappointment, sir. When I was arrested in 1985, all these individuals, the big lawyers that said we have come to my rescue, now one, now one came to my rescue. My late money, I used to, I used to make business where I hid it in. You know, those days he had a big chicken soup up. He used to receive also checks. I put it under the under the ground, stupid me, and they, they got they got they got wet, got damaged. My late parents were the ones who were running up and down trying to secure my release. My release. And what, what, what happened? These individuals joined the Tory party while I was staying in jail. I mean, the NDP while I was staying in jail. Opportunists, huh? All of them. All of them. I was still in jail. Joined the NDP. Who else do you have? Any other, any other persons you can remember who were arrested with you during that time? For the, from the party, at least. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, at that time, I don't want to say he was a member of the party, maybe he was a sympathizer, but Councillor Fulton Yancey, Councillor Fulton Yancey, Jan Yen and Ja, uh, um, Peace Be to His Ashes, uh, it's an old man that was in Plebo, he had a big business, business there. Uh, can't remember his name, but he was also jailed. And I was called the president, you know, president of the compound because I was the first person arrested and the last person released. And you were in Morubia at the time when you no, were arrested? No, Maryland. Oh, you were in Maryland? Maryland. You, will, you, may, you may understand this. Let me say this. When I went back in 1982, I didn't leave Maryland County until 2003. Ah. I stayed there. So I am who I am. I work in that county from my stay in Maryland County. So when you are chairman of the party, you are the chairman of the party in Maryland in branch. In Maryland, branch. Maryland branch, I MPP, see. Okay. Maryland branch, uh, 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 LAP, Maryland branch, Maryland chapter, if you prefer to say that. Okay. All right. So when did you get out? You were there 40 days, you say? Yeah. And then you stayed in Maryland all the time now that's, from that's, 85 to 91, for example, that first period. I was there. I didn't go anywhere. Okay. Stay there. So, what was your understanding of the invasion period now? Did you get any contact with uh, Mr. Taylor and his group when they first started to come in for the coup or maybe no. Johnson's group? Did they contact no. you all? You said you had sympathetic heart for the group. So yeah, what I was your support? Did you support yeah. them financially as a top businessman during that time? Maybe you helped them with some funds or what? No. Uh, what was it about? Could you tell no, us? you know sometimes politics can have some strange bad fellows. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in the Ivory Coast just said to you, selling rubber when Maryland County was invaded by the MPFL. I came home one week later. And I stayed there. And definitely whether I liked it or not, I had to sympathize with it. It was survival. So you sort of work together as a partner with your business skills, importing, exporting, you could help them with some supplies. I was surviving, sir. You were surviving? I was surviving. So you feel like you were indirectly a captive yourself and they were just using you? 
Well, I wouldn't want to use that. It would be too hard. Because you still have a choice to go into a refugee camp. Uh huh, that's what I was saying. Or you could run away. Or... I could run away. I sympathize. Yes, I did. Okay, so as such, you felt some link to their cause. Especially well, the way that Doe had been the one who rigged the election and took well, away the victory that you all had. This is a long story. You know, the certain things I believe is San Juan known to the survival of this country. I saw that initially in the approach of the MPFF. It went along, it went along and things started happening that uh, we, didn't, we didn't take again. I'll give you one example. I don't like to call names. There was a lady that was raped in Maryland. And you can ask Professor Thomas Collins. This, these guys, they, they were calling big guys, artillery group. They were investigated and they found them guilty of that crime. They were executed publicly in the street. When you see that, you say these people stand for something. When a poor Fanti boy with his workmate on a Sunday is being harassed and his workman is taken from him. And when he complains, he's shot by, 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 by a so-called soldier. And then the group conspired to take him to what they call war front to hide his activities. And when the people of Maryland County spoke against it, and these people were, this guy was sought for, collected, brought back, and also executed on the beach after investigation, he felt that things were on the right track. Again, when the banks in Maryland County were closed for years, I've been there. And then you see people being paid from the little bank there. You become impressed. I'm not here to praise anybody. I'm here to speak to the truth. I I'm telling you why I sympathize. I hope that's sufficient. I understand. Um, when did you become a superintendent of Maryland? Uh, 1999. It's a, it's a funny story, you know. 1999. Funny story. But let it let it be. Yeah, uh, this was I understand. Yeah, let it so be. So that means for the period of 91 to 97, it was more just you were there in the county and they were there. That's they it. saw their activities and they sort of won your heart to feel that there was some kind of justice amongst them. Right. Even though you saw some bad things also, but oh, of course. it was a difficult time of course. to work in as I of do. Course. Okay. So now let's move on to things. the next period now. During that time, you say, at no time were you given power or authority. Your sympathizing was just supporting them, giving a little cash wherever you could. No cash. And, you know, doing I something. I didn't have cash. Side. Well, doing some kind of positive help for them. Sympathizing, well, means sympathizing politically, yes. No okay. cash. All right. No politically, cash. yes. And if I have given cash, I'll be brave enough to tell you I've given cash. Mm -hmm. What happened? I said, if I have given cash, Mm -hmm. I'll be honest enough to tell you I've given oh, cash. Oh, no problem. I understand. I can tell so you that much. What did they do for you now? As a good sympathizer, what did you gain from the deal? Besides your life, <laughs> that's natural. I didn't go in there to gain something. I thought I could help make a better Liberia. Like I'm doing right now. Okay. So you went in there to do something. What did they allow you to do to help make the better Liberia? Well, I start to have the second thought of decentralization of Liberia. Where we could take Liberia out of Monrovia. Okay. Where somebody can be somebody way there in Maryland County. You'd be surprised that my first line of credit, $45,000, was given to me on the back of a call car. And you know who, who gave me the call car? Councilor Winston Tutman introduced me to Mark Clabe and he stated this is the guy we have spoken about he can help you in the rubber industry I didn't have to present anything else that money was transferred to the, the to the ACDB branch in Maryland where I got my money from to start doing business so you started logging business oh rubber 
rubber, rubber, rubber business. Rubber. So what year was that? Again for Mark Clavin. Mm -hmm. What year was that, please? 1983. Oh, 83, 83 Okay, so now we're in, let's say, 1997. The election has taken place. Talbot, I mean, Taylor is now president of Liberia. Here you are in Maryland. What happened then? Well, a sympathizer. I decided to continue to do business. Okay, logging, I mean, uh, rubber business. Yeah, rubber business. I was importing cement as well. Okay. So, two years after that down, you were elected or appointed as superintendent? That's a strange story. 1990, uh, 1999, I, would, I think that was the death of uh, 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 Joe, Joe Tate. Mm -hmm. Just around the period, I was invited by Mr. Taylor and he said to me, you have help put into place a government and you refuse to work for this government. You have a problem in Maryland County that I want you to help settle. People are being too, too that kind of way. Racially killing was on the rise. You, were, you can name the rest of it. And so um, he's alive. He's right there. Goodrich. Uh, he was then press secretary. He pressed the bell on his desk and called Gurish and he said, this is the superintendent of Maryland County. Okay. No discussion. Wow. And he you stayed there for six months and I stayed there up to the time I left. Okay. So you were appointed in that case by the president of Liberia and that helping to put into place. So you do accept that you are one of the pioneers to help put into place the new government? No, the, the government was always ro already rolling. Two years after government, the first superintendent of Maryland County after the 1997 election was not Dan Arise. He was Victor N. B. Walker Sr. As I told you, I still decided to do business. I didn't want to be part of government's business. Okay, so now after you were signed in 99, that was around the time Lurd and everybody started to come in and see the need to change the government. Yeah, so, I was way in Maryland. That thing was happening on the other side. So your political appointeeship became now a quasi-military appointmentship too, right? But you had to protect the interests of the government. <laughs> Is that the question intended to talk me? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just looking at reality. These are practical things. No, but no it, tailor, he would set you there and just have you just sitting there being a politician no, sir. if he needed something else. No, sir. That's a clear dichotomy between a political appointment and militarism. So what happened? You didn't get involved in anything at all on the military side as the had guns no, were coming in? I had absolutely no cause to get involved. But look at the distance between Maryland County and where Lord and other people operated from. Yeah, well, I hear Maryland was very active too. It supplied funds for Taylor with the logging, with the uh, various industries from Maryland. There were many things that were beneficial, beneficial to the group. And you were just sitting there doing nothing about it, just relaxing, yeah? What you heard, I heard too, but I can't prove. Oh, well, we have done our proof. Come next week for the section that we'll be having and you hear more. But well, in the meantime, you, for you now... You heard as much as I have. For you, you're just telling nothing. Nothing. This was just an appointment, and you were only a politician. All the killing, the shooting, the massacres, you were just there minding your business, you never got involved, you never gave an order to any soldier, no soldier ever came to you for advice, you're just a clean guy. Is that it? No, Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, I, I, I think that question is not being fair okay. to me. Could you make it fair for me? Yeah, it's not being fair. You, you, you've asked so many questions in one question. You know, I think you need to dissect it. Give it to okay. me one at a time. Let me dissect it. Well, I understand your background now from the overview we just discussed. Yeah. But we're coming now to an uh, impasse, a critical spot, mm -hmm. from the time from 1999 to 2003. This country was a legitimate elected government on the ground, but it was attacked by uh, two uh, revolutionary groups, Lerd and Model. And the country had to go into a state of self-defense. The international community said, no, don't get involved in arms or anything. Just stay there and be where you are and don't you know, import. But then the president made a decision to break these laws and bring in arms and defend himself and defend the country. He did it to the point where it was a stalemate. He couldn't do it anymore. He ended up giving up. So all of you now who were on the ground at that time, we've gotten a lot of reports of things that happened. You know, many people were killed, human rights were violated and during this period of, of struggle. So we're just trying to let the dust settle and get clarity to know your role in this process. 
That's all. So that's what my question is. I is. understand what, you, what you're saying. And let me remind you of one thing. Um, in 1997, Mr. Taylor was elected the constitutional head of Liberia. On the same constitution, constitution, he had the right to appoint superintendents and other local government officials. And I took advantage of one of those. I was appointed. Let me be hypothetical here. Do you think I would have been alive today and sitting in this witness chair if I had dared to challenge a constituted authority in the regards in which you asked me to do? Of course not. Thank you. That's my answer. Okay. So then you're confessing that you did do certain things that you may not have wanted to do, but it was done under the duress of the political environment at that time. No, I didn't say that. Oh. But then what? No. I didn't say that. I said what I said, not what you said. Yo, could you help us to understand? Because what I'm getting at is there was nothing bad, and I know there were a lot of bad things that he had to get no, to do. <laughs> and you were just doing innocent things, but yet you were worried that you could be killed. I'm confused. I mean, are you just telling us that you did nothing and there was no pressure to do anything bad and everything was dandy? Or did you may have to have made orders and directions connected to these accusations that were put against you or maybe that you want to, you know, say anything about or just leave it at that, that you did nothing and everything was okay? Uh, Mr. Commissioner, again, in my opening statement, I said I've come here to speak honestly to the truth okay. in this country and I will pray that I will continue to do that. If asked me one or two questions as to my participation in the process that led to our being here, sitting here, you as a commissioner, I as uh, a civil servant in this regard. Living. What I'm saying to you and I continue to say here that I'm not going to shift responsibility on anybody okay. that I that I can be held for. I'm not. I'm not going to sit down here because uh, maybe Mr. Taylor or somebody down here say, okay, he gave me order, so I was under duress to do what I did. I executed my authority as superintendent of Maryland County and I won't to be specific as to what went wrong, what did I do in the execution of that authority as superintendent of Maryland County that I can address myself to. Okay, I understand. You understand? Then I'll rephrase my question make it simpler then. Do you in your authority as superintendent of Maryland County at any way or time violate any of the international humanitarian laws with regard to people's human rights, for example, murder, killing, torture, rape, and being directly responsible for giving order to do it or indirectly have it done? The answer is no. Okay. Thank you. But then, that's all. then, the answer is no. But again, I'm not going to claim infallibility. I'm not going to claim infallibility. I gave a scenario where you apologize to events. As I executed my authority as a superintendent of Maryland County, I may have hurt people. But you cannot equate that to mass murder, rape, or what you call it. And that event, I always wish to apologize to. Thank you Thank you for coming to be a part of the process. Um, I will address the last statement you made. In executing, you cannot claim to be infallible. In executing, um, you cannot speak to um, a mass form of murder or destruction or something, but you can speak to event. You know, and in executing your duties as superintendent, you may have hurt someone. Can you name one of those events that you can speak to one or two or so that can bring our mind fresh as to your role? Madam, you didn't hear me well. 
Pardon and me? I'm responding, you didn't hear me well. I was responding to a statement made by the Honorable Commissioner. Okay, can you repeat what you said? So I spoke to A also on a broad spectrum, just as he delivered it to me, I answered it. Pardon me? I said, I was speaking to him on a broader spectrum, just as he gave it to me, I delivered it to him. Mm -hmm. I would not be specific. I added that proviso at the end of it to state what I said obviously. Yeah. I'm not going to remain in a state of denial. If I've done something, I want to be a man enough to face it. All right? Yeah. Now, in Maryland County, he hasn't stated anything to me that he wanted me to address. Because I again provided an antithesis, an antithesis, or perhaps a thesis delivered by those who you met earlier than, 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 than now. You want the synthesis which the librarian people will obviously provide. All right? So I can provide a synthesis to it. I'm providing my antithesis to what somebody claimed that I may or may have not done. So to act in, to go looking around for something that I have done that I regret is not being fair. Okay, um, I have a few questions again to answer to give um, that may bring clarity. Concerning uh, your activities as a student activist, you said you were ashamed of some of the events mm -hmm. that you were a part of and also that you did not achieve anything. But before you started to be a part of them, what did you expect to achieve? What were those things you expected to see differently that you did not see? And it's not a shame to even talk about it. Well, okay, let me start this way. The first time, I mentioned this already, I repeated, the first time I got close to a system was when my classmate, was taking out of his class and carry and put the bangle on his left foot and made him a chief. Well, that was part of the, of the, of the traditional practice, you know? When you are named chief, you, anywhere they go for you. I think she was supposed to know some of the traditional practices. Even when they name you high priest, you can be in America when you are named high priest, they will go for you and make you high priest and carry you. Was that Maryland County? No, but Maryland they practice County. elsewhere too. And when that happened, I felt it was wrong, and that should stop. And so we said, then, at that moment, that this must stop, and the best way around is for people to elect chiefs, so chiefs will not be grabbed from classroom and carried the way they want to carry by this traditional method. But I didn't think that that would have created more chaos in this country than anything else. That we were taking out a system and we had nothing to replace it with. That's one. Two, many young persons will tell you that we were carried away by rhetorics. You know, we were so hot. Everything we heard, we want to be a part of it. And so we could sit here and talk 10 minutes of, of nothing, seeing nothing, and think we have said something with all the words we've used. That was the order of the day. And so we're part of it. And that's why I apologize to the email history that we went the route we went. Instead of ensuring, entrenching democracy in Liberia, we thought we could get it the other way around. first school in this country was staged by us, according to you. My question is, uh, what do you mean by us? And when was this first, first school staged? <clears throat> when I made that statement, I said, let me give a political twist, a hypothetical twist, 
and also a controversial twist to this and I hope I was wrong what I stated is that I think that the first coup d'etat in this country was staged by us during the rest riot because we brought this country to a complete standstill yeah, you know that us all of us those are us who were uh, I'm not going to start naming you know the usual leaders you know my leaders man they were available they still still available they stay around they know themselves if they don't come and speak to the issue here yeah, I'm speaking to what I know again I don't want to indict them but you know them I don't know them uh, oh, okay you, you don't know it. them the young people who were out there with the Aluta Continua catastrophically catapulting you know our words we use I'm not I mean and they identify the individuals and so on that evening nobody could find William Richard Tolbert as he was said he was in Guinea we're looking for a for here. for him. He passed by an executive mansion. He couldn't see anything. And we couldn't meet to say anything what we wanted to do. That we finally got the government to its knees. What could we do? Who would be the apparent leader? What happened then was that in that 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 days. The Guinea, the Guinean troops move him under the Mano River Union Court, I would, I would guess, and were able to bring some degree of sanity at the executive mansion. And Mr. Tobo returned and made his announcement on the radio. Now that is hypothetical. I hope I'm wrong. So you were one of those who marched to the mansion that night? I was one of those in the street. You're one of those in the street. Yes, definitely. But you did not go to the mansion. No, I'm one of those in the street. My okay. direct look, my, my 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 location, my my, my area, or or John, or can Johnson Road. Yeah, but at the same time, um, you also said that Taylor at one point told you, um, you helped to put a government into place. Come again. You said that Taylor at one point told you that you helped to put the government into place and yet and still you refused positions that were offered to you. I think it was somewhere in 1997 before you became senator or so. Superintendent, I mean. Um, my question is what did you do to help to put this government into place? And when was it that you did what you did? Good. I was chairman of the National Patriotic Party in Maryland chapter. I was chairman of the Council of Chairpersons of the National Patriotic Party. So that would be all already. You were chairman. MPB what year? No. That's a long period. What you year? asked me you asked me what did I do? Yes. Right? And you gave me us to put what you the did. party into place. Yeah, and you gave me us what you did. Yeah. To do that to, to put a party into place. So between 1996 to 1995, 1996, 1997, somewhere around it. Yes, up to 1997. 1995, 1997. 1995, you were chairman of NPP. Maryland chapter. Yes. Chapter. The chairman of NPP Maryland chapter. Uh huh. What else? Pardon me? That's what else? All? I said two things. You yeah. asked me how I contributed. When he said you contributed to putting a government into place, I told you I was the chairman of the MPP Maryland chapter and also the chairman of the Council of Chairpersons of the National Patriotic Party. It means all the chairpersons around the country, I chair them. And that was not an official position now something that we decided we put together to be able to speak with one voice with your presence so you will not find that in the the constitution or bylaws of the national patriotic party thank you so much
Mr. Witness, I think what's your last, your present portfolio, Ambassador at Large? Yeah, Ambassador at Large. Okay. All right, but uh, we are not uh, if in investigating the period of which you are Ambassador at Large. So I think then your last position was former superintendent of uh, Maryland County. Former um, minister of internal affairs. Former minister of internal affairs. Thank okay. you. After the superintendency, he became internal affairs minister. Yeah. Up to during which period? During the interim period. Still the until, interim until, period. until inauguration. Okay, yes, but our period does not cover the interim period. So um, I'm Commissioner Pearl Brown Bull. Uh, I'm concerned, uh, my first question relates to Mark Clavin. And you said that the first big money you got was just on a card. Councilor Winston Tottenham wrote to Mark Clavin to give you the money. Am no, I correct? No, 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 or no. Could you not, please explain that? Not to give me the money. To do what? I go further in this explanation. Yeah. I because dying. I have no relationship with Mark Lavin. I was. I so give I know you. Let, Mark Lavin. let me go further in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was buying cement. Remember, I told you that. You are buying cement. You yeah. are in business. Then. I was in business. Remember, okay. I told you that. Yes. Okay. I came to Monrovia, mm -hmm. and Councilor Tuckman called me and said, "Look, uh, you're doing very well. What's your interest?" in extending your business to the purchase of rubber. Mm -hmm. I said, in which way? He said, well, Firestone is fading away and what Firestone is offering is so small. It's extremely small. 15 cents a pound of rubber, it could be better than that for our people. And the Winston is from Maryland. He said, I will introduce you to somebody, to a friend who wants to buy rubber in Maryland. So don't go today. I was on my way back to Maryland. At that time we had chicken egg, you know? That was the plane, L and A, chicken egg. And he took his call car, wrote on the back of the call car, and with these words, I can remember. This is the young man we have spoken about. I got to Mark Lavin. Mark said to me, we want you to buy rubber in Maryland for us. I said, yes, I could do that for you. He said, but I want you to spend the weekend here because Councillor Lafayette Morgan is up there and he will come back. When he comes back, he will have the contract rating. Okay. And so Lafayette indeed came, the contract was rating. And the amount was transferred. The, the amount was forty-five thousand $45, U.S. dollars. dollars. Yep. Can you tell us the nationality of Mark Clavin? Honestly, that was not my interest of Mark Clavin, but Mark Clavin was later on accused yes. uh, by the Doe government of mm -hmm. being a Jewish American, something like that, and so. Yeah. And he was all, yeah. Yeah, somebody. They gave him all kind of charges. I'm, yes. I'm not going to say And the he charges. had to leave the country. He was expelled from the yes. country. Yeah. Okay, that's the clarification I wanted. Ah, uh, well, you wanted that, to make that sure that I spoke to That was my general knowledge, and I didn't think right. the public was aware. So this I just wanted the clarification for you to Thank clarify. Thank you. You have yes. established the truth of it. Yes, that because I do recall Laughing Morgan was the lawyer and he was up and down. He was a Jewish American, mm -hmm. but because of his alleged dealings within the country during that period, I think between 83 to 84, he was expelled. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just for clarity, for those who didn't know, look like this film traffic who could just take 45,000 and to know those who were connected with him. And the, the second question, uh, don't have here, you are superintendent of Maryland, this, uh, on our constituted elected government, because there was election 19, uh, 97. 90, 97. Yeah. 
The superintendent is the representative of the president in that particular, in any county. Am I correct? Some like the administrative head or the representative, so to speak, right? Well, uh, can Madam you tell us a little bit the functions of the superintendent? Because most people, when well, you know, doing war period mm -hmm. and just coming from conflict, we had just had an election, but it's still we had a lot of militia people still around. Around. So, what was the function, the main function during that period of the superintendent in those areas? I mean, that specific area. Wait, madam, the question is extremely vague. But anyway, I'm going to too big. Just tell me what you did within let me, the period. Let me attempt to, yes. to, to answer that question. I knew very well, and I mm -hmm. still know that today, that there is this void, vacuum between the period on the review when we punctuated because i don't like to say the 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 the, 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 the democracy of liberia but when we punctuated the stability of liberia in 1980 we brought people into local government and in other areas that were not well versed in what they're supposed to do i can tell you for sure even today you have about 75% of superintendents who just don't know the job function. So the first thing I did when I became Minister of Internal Affairs was to go back to what my predecessor did. Excuse me, I'm not talking cool. about when you were be were you, Minister were you, of Internal yeah, Affairs. Give me a break. I'm saying when you were superintendent because you became Minister of Internal Affairs after you were superintendent. And I'm so probably when you were Internal Affairs, you, you did what you're supposed to do to regularize the functions of superintendent, but when you serve before you went to internal affairs. So I'm talking about the period before you went to internal affairs because that's not our era investigation. Our era investigation covers before that time. So I've asked the question as superintendent of Maryland County, from 1997 or something to 2003, uh, the head for the NPP government and the representative of this chair, the president in Maryland. What was your function? What were you doing? Okay. Madam, Madam Commissioner, do you want to congest my response? If you can, yes, because that is no accusation to say someone accusing. We just want to know because for history, within the period 1997 to 2003, what were superintendents doing? And you were the head, you were the president's representative in, in Maryland County, one of the well-known <laughs> counties. What were you doing there? That's what I want in a little Ma nutshell. Madam, Madam, Madam Commissioner, I yes, think is, it is obligatory on the part of every patriotic Liberian who is given an opportunity to come here to add substance to the discussion and lay the premise for discussion. You, with, with, with my knowledge of local government, you don't expect me to answer a yes and no question there. That's no you, yes or no question I'm asking to say yes, no. I'm saying okay, Madam, Madam, Madam because Commissioner, I have to write for history. Madam Commissioner, yeah. uh, as Superintendent of Maryland County, mm -hmm. as Superintendent of Maryland County. The Superintendent of Maryland County. Okay, the next question. The, the general audience can understand what were your function and the radio. And uh, do you remember, as Superintendent of Maryland County, do you recall during the border attack on the southeastern region that you dismantled a bridge? So was it as uh, as the superintendent and the leader of 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 of, of Maryland County to maybe enable your? Did you first recall this ordering the dismantling of a bridge during the border attack? The model. Yeah, model, M-O-D-E-L. 
Yes, Madam Can you tell us what bridge they name, where located, and why? Thank you, but it needs an explanation. Can I? Thank you. Yes, please. Madam, Madam Commissioner, in 1993, I was buying rubber. Just as I drove down the road, my life today was saved by a tapo who stopped me and said to me, don't continue down that road. The people right in the corner, at that time it was LPC. And when I stopped, he said, turn around here. Just about to turn around, I heard the first explosion. I heard the second explosion. I turned my car around, and this place is a place in, in Maryland they call Tubake. Those of you who know Maryland County. I turned around there, and I ran all the way back to Harper. I met some of the young men sitting around the town. I said, gentlemen, the place sitting, the people right here, you right here, you better find a way out of here. And so those young men were able to go. But the old people, an entire generation, and I want to make mention of them, but in my concluding statement I will, were wiped out completely for absolutely no reason. People over 80 years, people throat were slit, and slippers put in the throat, completely killed. And that happened. Slaughter. And this time, when I was superintendent, there was a conflict between Liberia and the Africans, you are aware. My people were there again. Nowhere to go. The Avoran government has stopped Liberians from going across to the border. Across the border. And you know, Maryland County borders a place called Tabu. Completely stopped. Nobody could go. So when I heard that these people had taken River G already. I came back to town. I called a council. I said, gentlemen, what can we do? These people will be on us. We're not care for tonight. Do we have the same situation we had in 1993? I said, but what can we do? I said, I need time. Because I need to go across to Tabu to talk to my counterpart, counterpart who is the prefect we call him prefect to beg him to permit women and children to go across because you people are not part of this war and for what happened in 1993 to be revisited upon my people something had to be done and what came out there is that we have to dismantle the bridge And yes, indeed, I gave the instruction for that bridge to be dismantled. Why I went across. I went across, met the superintendent, appealed to him. Superintendent from? Tabu. Tabu, Cote d'Ivoire. Okay. He's the prefect. Appealed to him to let women and children go in. And I can remember that very well. I still remember two persons that went along with me. One, Gus Mensa, he's buying rubber in Maryland, and one, Henry Cole, he works with the office of the superintendent in Maryland. And I said to him, I'll be a good neighbor. And I was superintendent, nobody crossed from Maryland into Tabu. We are all grow people, grow on the left bank, grow on the right bank. We can't let this happen to my people. So after three, four hours of negotiation, he called Abijah and he said, let them come in, but keep them to the border. And so we ordered the bridge 
the planks on the bridge to be removed so that it will delay the coming in of the forces of Model. I gave the instructions and I stand by that instruction, thereby saving lives, hundreds of lives in Maryland County. I'm not going to deny here that I didn't give that instruction. I did. Uh, do you know whether that bridge was put back and who did it and when was it put back? Oh, that thing was done in 2003 and was used up to 2007, 2008. It was just uh, recently it was being refurbished by the Chinese government. We've been using it up and down. Okay. Again, I'd like to add here, we remove the planks. If that bridge was completely destroyed, nobody would have used it because it's on part of the Kavala River, it's rocks left and right. You talk about consider yourself as one of the pressure jewels in which uh, the late former William R. Tauber called the young people at that time. Uh, you also said that uh, the first school was had in 1979. I think you say we or us or something. Us or we. Although you didn't call the names of we or us but you have specifically identified yourself to be one of the we's. Uh, do you recall, because a witness came here and he said on that April, 14, April 14, 1979, he was the leader of the military wing of PPP. Military? Yeah, the militant wing of PPP and although unbeknownst to the leadership like Barkas Matthew, they had someone who showed them how to make kerosene bomb. And on April 14, 1979, they threw a kerosene one of the bomb at the police. That witness testify that they threw the, it at the police and when they threw it at the police the police fired back he even said they started the coup I mean the march now you have said that the coup really started 1979 April 14 were you aware of the bomb making a throwing since you say we started us yeah us that's us so at least we don't know who the other us but you have said us so we can consider you to be one of the us were you aware of the kerosene bomb that was first thrown at the police according to the testimony of the head of the militant but at least he did say it was unbeknown to the leadership of PPP. Madam, if we, if we contextualize, speak in the context in which I presented that statement, how we will understand what I meant. But let me go further than that. Uh, one, I do not, I was not a member of PPP, PL, and you name the rest. So I want to know who's who's making kerosene bomb or what kind of bomb or and who was the military win, you know. As I told you again, I didn't come to relaunch my career, so I wouldn't want to claim things that I know nothing about. I do not know. Thank you very much. And thanks for participating in the truth session, truth telling, and the TRC process. testimony you denied of being part of partial 
of a militia group called Mountain Lion Brigade. Yeah. And so? That's true. But as superintendent, who is the vice gerent of the president in the county, mm -hmm. were you aware of the existence of this brigade? No, uh, Mr. Commissioner. Uh, the first thing I tried to make clear, and uh, when I went to the website to read this, because I told you initially I knew nothing until I heard it from you, I went to your website. I see that the mountain lions are supposed to be based in uh, River G. That's what the website states that the mountain lions are cheap. I can't account for mountain lion in Maryland County. I was superintendent of Maryland County, so I know nothing about mountain lion being in Maryland County. Two, I'm not finished. Two, in your letter to me, you say member of the mountain lion. Now, if I was superintendent and member, that means the head should be higher than me. So I wanted clarity on who, who the head was and who constituted this mountain lion that I could subordinate, subordinate myself to. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it is said from the records before us yeah. that you and one general, Johnny Paul Kruma, was leader of this brigade. Was Johnny Paul Kruma ever visited uh, Maryland County during your superintendentship? Who is the Johnny Paul Kruma? The one from several you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I don't know Johnny Paul Kruma. What? Well, Johnny Paul Kruma never visited Maryland County. Have you any idea about the massacre that took place in Glaro? Uh, I think Glaro is in River G County. Yes, I heard that Glaro is in River G County. Mr. Commissioner, I said earlier and I repeat, I will not stay here and sit in a state of denial. If I tell you that I did not hear of unnecessary killings around there. I'll be lying. This county is next door to, like, to Maryland. I heard plenty of things. But there are things I can't substantiate. Therefore, I wish not to speculate. I heard some of these things. I heard some of them. But I can say for sure John Brown is involved. If I say for sure John Brown is involved, I must be able to go further by helping the TRC in getting to the bottom of the truth. So I've heard a lot. In my tenure, I heard a lot. But I can't substantiate. While testifying, you told the commission that a civil action was instituted by you and the TRC intervened yeah. to answer pleading for those people. Yeah. Can you tell us how the TRC intervened came into that picture as a lawyer or as what? Well, as, I think as a lawyer, we filed a case, action of damage for libel. It was filed April 4, 2008 at 2.12 p.m., the clerk of court. In a case, a racial arise of the city of Morovia versus Solibritia. When this rate, as a matter of fact, was served on Solotia and Martha Watkins, they took it to the TRC. 
the TRC lawyer stepped forward to defend them. My lawyers made it clear that this is not a case of the TRC. It's a case that started since 2004. But, but his response was that, I mean, he, he do his work. So he's, he's been representing them. But then we said to ourselves, this is unfortunate. If since almost four years ago, I've not been able to see my accuser. I've not been able to sit face to face with these individuals who keep doing what they're doing. An opportunity has come. The TRC has said to us repeatedly that this is not a courtroom. They themselves, they're not here for me to confront my accuser, but would rather get my side of the story. So I rely on the due process of law. So when they step in to ask for this missile, quoting TRC's regulations are mandate, it took us by surprise. We said, well, I think we've been, our constitutional right has been violated. We need to face our accuser one day. We need to see and let the person go beyond radio, radio broadcasts and say, I was there, I saw you, you participated in this. Because it is my character, my loved ones, my family, that is also under the stream. Not them arise alone, it will live after me. If this is not corrected, you know, it becomes tried, a stigma. What I tried to find out, Mr. Witness, is that how this representation or intervention by the TRC was done, whether it first applied for uh, inclusion as a party to the case and then come out with a pleading, or it came as TRC representing the defendants you sue. In which way? Mr. Commissioner, was, it, was it a petition for intervention as Mr. party to the case or it was um, a pleading filed Mr. by the commission Mr. as a lawyer representing the, 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 the defendant? You know, we want to get it clear because some of us don't know the details, so we want to get it clear, understanding from you. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, I think you need to ask the TRC lawyer. I have a lawyer, and I can, for the record, say tell you it's Kim and Associates legal consultant, head of uh, Councilor um, uh, Phyllis Gould. You can make reference to them, and that can be clear out. But I'm providing you information my lawyer gave me. I can't be that exact to speak to judicial matters. There's a provision within the TRC Act that gives right to whomsoever been accused either of commission or omission of an act to apply it to the commission for exoneration. And are you prepared to confront these witnesses within the TRC forum to exchange experiences? Well, uh, I will have to depend on the expert advice of my lawyers because this case is in court. I've asked them to halt proceedings because I wanted to give this process an opportunity to proceed. Again, I said it's obligatory on every part of every patriotic life to contribute to this process to ensure that it is successful and so that we then halt where we are and they've halted it after two two motions were uh, provided by the TRC and dismissed so that's where we are again if these individuals prepare to come before you after we have actually gotten to the bottom of the matter and they've heard and publicly say this to the Liberian people, I'm prepared to set up. Other than that, 
I go for the due process. So the, I have my options open. I'm not closing my doors. I'm saying I've been stained since 2004. I want to clear my name. Not only because I'm here, but for the future. That's what I'm trying to do. And that's why I brought you this entire dossier. Communications. I told you, I went as far as to uh, uh, the, the, the secretary, Augustine Toll. Of the Catholic secretary, I sat for him. I said, Toll, please tell me why I'm being treated the way I'm, I, I'm treated. This man doesn't want to come before, but you see, he got papers. He can show one paper. And I'm not going to be on the radio. You one accusation against another. You accuse me, I accuse you. I got better things to do in my life and time. So I'm open, sir. I'm open. You create a forum for me to face them. I got no problem. My lawyer sits there. If we certify, we say we certify. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. He said that initiated a dialogue or meeting among 64 people from River G, yeah. where Solutiem was a member of that yeah. meeting. Uh, where was that meeting held? Right here, Morovia. And during that period, I'm sure you've been able to find out some other facts as to the massacre that happened in River G. Me? Do you have any, I, I'm not seeing you, because based knowing that you were in Maryland and this Glaro massacre were happening mm. in River G, do you have any idea as to which of the factions were responsible for the massacre based on your meetings and investigation? Was it GOL or Model? I, I'm not going to speculate again, but let me add something. Check your inquiry unit properly. They've done sufficient investigation and they'll tell you exactly what happened. So you have not been able to find out anything? We want to from, no, I madam. I have information from those who live around that area. That's what I'm saying. Madam, that was not part of my responsibility to investigate that matter. I was looking for justice because I was linked for myself. And that's one of the reasons why I refused to read the, 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 the what they call it, the, the report. I'm going to give you the report. I know we have not given us the report. I'm going to give us, I'm going to give you the report. I'm, in that process, I also wrote on it the reply, what they have said, the ones from a lawyer, the one from Kabina Jana as minister, the one from the Ministry of Defense. I'm gonna give it to you. Again, I've said I'm not gonna I'm not going to indict anybody. I'm gonna speak about their Marais's involvement in any issue. Others I want because I'm only going to murder this water by start calling people names, creating new new situations. I'm not saying name, I'm saying faction. If we talk no, about the girl, we're going I, to articles. There were a lot know. of things happening, so that's why I dismantled the bridge. I don't, I don't. What? Thing? The bridge in Maryland was dismantled. Because, I told you that me. Yes, I know. That's uh -huh. what I'm saying. Yeah. Because a lot of things were happening there. Madam, the girl was a bottle price, right? Madam, mm -hmm. madam. I laid a premise under which I instructed my people to move the planks of the bridge. My people had to go across to the Ivory Coast and I needed time. And I don't regret doing that. For those who were at the border, I can name some of them who today still call me the Madonna sisters, sisters of charity, sisters of charity, were the first who cut back to me there and say you have to do something. Even us sisters, they won't want us to go. And today, the only D I have property, any the only thing that I have that I have that I can show you that this is my property. But the last thing I gave to the sisters, I said, since you people are crossing now, the the Maria and D, just take it across. I walk from Maryland County to Grand Cru. After I saw to it that my people had gone across. Okay, that I can tell you, I did, I instructed, I did not do it physically with my hands, eh? but it was done on my instruction and I take full responsibility for that. 
I save lives in that process and I don't have any regrets. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I understand you to say that um, the court proceeding that you uh, instigated against um, Martha Watkins and this brown fellow mm -hmm. was not because of the statement that they made at the TIC in 2008, but rather an incident that took place between you and them in 2004. The beginning of the incident in 2004. You had some problem before they came to the TRC. Yes. Okay. Listen to this. In 2004, Mr. Dempsey Brown said he had witnesses. I think I read letters here. Of people mm -hmm. accusing us of it. I read those letters. Yes. He refused to name those witnesses. Okay. All right? Uh-huh. We knew the witnesses you were talking about. Okay. If you read this document, you will see even other documents there but we knew the witnesses mm -hmm. he never went to court he never carried us to court and at that time you did not take him to court no you asked him to go to court the, the, the proceeding has started we just can't go to court to go to go lose i mean somebody would tell us about who are the people the best thing he won't call a witness's name now that i know my, i know the, the people who are seeing it it's not only tia and martha going to court i'm going to drag more more than that to court so in 2008 did he name the witnesses? In 2008? Yeah. They named themselves. They named themselves? Yes. And that's how you went to court? They repeated. Where, where no. did they name themselves? They repeated what we already knew. Where did they do this? They did that in River G and they also did it before you. In River G? Yes. Before the TRC process? No, Brian they did it at the TRC process and they also did it in a forum in River G. So Brian was a witness in the TRC process. But I'll be confused with this. That why I don't understand. So you gotta make me to understand. Alright, let me let me try again. I understand all the points that you read. No, but you can't understand and go back to the same question. You, you can't understand it properly and go back to the same question. You want me to explain it better? Let me explain it better. Excuse me. Yeah. I understood what you said about 2004. Uh -huh. They accused you and refused to name witnesses. Yeah. And then in 2008, they were able to name witnesses. I'm asking where did they name those witnesses? Was Brown one of the witnesses of the TRC process? No, no, I did not say that. But who named the witnesses that you heard? You heard me saying they named. Action. You heard me saying here they named themselves. Where? One at your hearing, where your big uh, legal tenant say they cooperated what we already already knew. One, and in a specific forum, they also revealed themselves. Okay. This so you said, took yeah. them to court on one, a specific forum that they named themselves, and to the TRC process. Madam, ma Madam, Madam, my lawyer will answer that question. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, you know, let's, let's, let's go beyond what we're trying to do here. Hmm? Some of us have worked for our character over the years. Mm -hmm. I'm living within a legacy of a strong person. Mm -hmm. Dan Morris is just not alone. Mm -hmm. I'm from the one they call Professor Morris. I'm down that chain. And I must pass it on to the next generation. I must mm -hmm. pass it on untinted. Mm -hmm. Just exactly what I try to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe people take their character for granted. I will not. And I do not. And I know you, Madam Commissioner, isn't attempting to deny me a due process. No. Uh -huh. So we're on, the same, we're on the same bench. We're not across the road. I'm not attempting to deny anything. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to clarify what you said. Because even if that's the she, case, even if that's the case, if it was at said, the TRC hearing, Madam, Madam Commissioner, mm -hmm, that you heard it. Even, even if it was at the TRC hearing alone, are you saying people must not be accountable for statement they make before you? Did I say that? Or did I ask you a but question? But that what you, but that what, what the answer, the, the question seems to be alluding to. No, you can't say that. Then I'm sorry, madam, for uh -huh. thinking for you. 
Thank you too. And you know, and I say repeat. If you say your lawyer will answer, then we can go to your lawyer. But we need to clarify it because we did not understand upon which context that you brought that forward, that the TRC represented these people. And we're still trying to understand it. So if you cannot give us information, we cannot clarify your name. Yeah, you but, but, need to clarify your name. The TRC process is such that when you are accused, you are given the opportunity to come and clarify your name. Mm -hmm. To clear your name. And so this is an opportunity for you to give us all of those information so we are able to understand some of these things that took place even during our own process. If we do not understand it, we cannot help you. you we know, cannot clear your name. Yeah, hey, madam. Madam, certain judicial matter, I'm not called okay. to Thank speak you. to. I do okay. not know. I'm okay. very ignorant. You know, this council of very So we there. take the story as Yeah. It. Thank you yeah. very much. We can find out from your lawyer. Thank you, Mr. Witness. <clears throat> Reference the last exchange between you and the vice chair. I would just ask one question. Yeah. Whether the suit in reference was filed before the defendant's appearance before the TRC or it was after the appearance at the TRC? If you can recall. I, I want to be too exact. I don't know the time frame. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I'd like to ask as to whether you were in Maryland or the sub-region during the operations of the LPC. I was in Maryland. You were in Maryland. I was in Maryland. Can you kindly speak to the activities of that faction in Maryland? What happened, what you saw, the character of that uh, faction? Sir, I would want to, to speak to it in my concluding statement. In your concluding statement? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, then, if you prefer reserving it for later, we'll move forward to another question. Yeah, sir. In 1999, you became superintendent of Maryland County. Yes, sir. At that time, there was war in the west, mm -hmm. northwest of Liberia, and there were threats from the border with Africa. I was just hoping you will add to what was the general atmosphere in that region when there was rumor of war and there were activities across the border and the nation's territory was were threatened from the western end. Sir, I mean, that period was a difficult time to be a superintendent. Very difficult time to be a superintendent. There was a situation going across the border that we couldn't have any control or no say in it. Uh, those who live in Maryland, certain part of Maryland, you could hear the artillery from Côte d'Ivoire. That period was a state of confusion. We so had to tread some fine line. So you begin superintending the midst of great confusion in that region? Yes, so to speak. There was war across the border in Africa. No, the war started uh, sometime around 2002, 2003, yeah. During that period, the war was on this side. And there were movements. There were difficult periods. We was tried to ever, balance our superintendency. Was there ever a time you saw the need to bring all the superintendents together from the sub-region in an effort to protect that region from whatever incursion there was? It was difficult. I, I, I spoke once or twice to Superintendent Ruth Milton. Grand Jida. Yeah, Grand Jida. On the prevailing situation, she herself was so confused. We couldn't get anywhere. We were, we were afraid also, you know. Uh, even if we wanted to help, we would be very careful because there were people who were quick to accuse you of trying to form your own faction. So we we just listening and try to survive. So there was no time that the superintendents gathered for a meeting, security or whatever relating to the pending crisis 
in Riroji, in Hapo, or in uh, Zwedru, or Fishtown, at no time that you participated in such meetings? Maybe I know what you're alluding to. Uh, what I can remember is that at one time, we, members of the National Patriotic Party, decided that we will hold a meeting outside of Monrovia, not under the leadership, the, the leadership at the time that we believe in more than they believe in. And there was a need, that there, was a, there was a need for us to meet in Maryland and discuss some of our common issues. And so I was thinking around talk my birthday. I invited all the superintendents in the area to come to Maryland. What and we joined, eh? Sorry, I think please. around 2002, around somewhere, 2002 around, yeah, right. somewhere around there. And those members of the National Patriotic Party out here will tell you that we came up with a resolution and we virtually fought the group in Monrovia just to present that document to Mr. Taylor. Because the first thing on our resolution was that the government of Liberia should be a civil servant. The here, very here, can remember. They felt the resolution was too radical. Two, that Liberia should develop good neighborliness, we should be friends of our neighbors, and other things we listed. In the sub region, especially in River G, people see you as a high authority. Instead of just saying superintendent of Maryland County, you say he's the superintendent of the sub region, meaning that your authority more or less extended to other counties. One could understand during a period of conflict, people look forward to a strong leadership. Uh, is there anything you can say about that? Look, there are those who are criminal minded. Criminal minded where they want to talk something that there's no way can link me as superintendent of America and say a general superintendent of the Southeastern region. That position never existed. They want to ready to, ready to be criminal. Okay. Then they will see a general superintendent. But let me say this to you. I believe in the state of Maryland on the west coast of Africa. I believe in that. And the state of Maryland on the west coast of Africa prior to 18, 1857 existed as a unit. And they extended from the Kavala River to the Sesta River. And so I feel that people living in that area, when they have a problem, we do have a problem as well. So yes, indeed. I go around there. You want to hear the other one I stricken? <laughs> I also questioned the 1857 annexation, so-called annexation of Maryland, the state of Maryland in, in Africa to the Republic of Liberia. Reason, if the Maryland Colonization Society grew up of the American Colonization Society because the American Colonization, colonization Society was corrupt, how then? In the shortest possible time, 10 years after Liberia declared independence, will the state of Maryland and Africa be annexed? What they have in their hand is a piece of pack, a military pack, that today is being called annexation, annexation document. I'm sorry I, I, I say this, but it hurts me when, when, when the benefit of survival as a people is not brought to bear on those persons who are part of you. Was the current day River G a part of uh, the state of Maryland? Yes. What's about Grand Crew? Yes. <laughs> the state of Maryland in Africa, if you go to a place, those who have gone to Sandra, you will see a handshake in Cote d'Ivoire. That was the boundary of the state of Maryland in Africa. You remember your history tells you you had Eastern Province before it became Grand Jire. So that was Grand the state Jire, of Maryland. Grand Jire was also part of the It's state also of part of the state of Maryland in Africa. So given that uh, strong belief of yours 
As superintendent of Maryland, you sought to exercise. No, no, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I didn't say that, Mr. Chairman. I didn't say that. I didn't say that, Mr. Chairman. I didn't say that. I just express my belief, and I sometimes know. I'm carried away when I express my belief. I didn't say that, Mr. Chairman. I understand very well. Yeah. Uh, Liberia made incursions into Africa as far as our investigation goes, mm -hmm. as far as testimonies from people in the sub region and even here. And you were superintendent at the time. <clears throat> Some of the speaking to members of government militias, they said that the rebels were training in Africa and the action was meant to dismantle the rebels. And others who, from casual political assessment, said it was just mere adventurism on our part. Mm -hmm. What is your information about our military activities across the border with Africa at the time when you were superintendent? Well, let me, let me say it this way. Uh, I heard a lot about military incursion in Cote d'Ivoire from Liberia. What we couldn't get over was that how do you identify this group that carried out the incursion, whether they were GOL, whether they were from some small faction. Because that didn't happen in Maryland County, but we heard we, there was some problem in River G and across the border from River G County of people get, being involved in uh, adventurism, you know, a group going across to the border, across there, do what they want to do, run back, put run behind them and run back into Liberia, you know, those things we heard. Those things we heard. Okay, uh, Commissioner Connor asks you about um, a brigade. Mountain Lions Brigade. Yeah, well. Yes, sir. And uh, I remember your response. You said uh, you weren't a member because to become a member will mean you are subjecting yourself to another authority. Yeah, okay. Did that imply that you were the leader of this Mountain Lions Brigade? The, come again, sir. The brigade, the Mountain Lions Brigade. Yeah. Commissioner Corner asked if you were a member. Uh -huh. And you said to become a member of that brigade to be subjecting yourself to a higher authority. Yeah. So I'm asking, does that imply that you were the head of that brigade? No, absolutely not. What what I said, what, what we wanted to find out is this. Um, the, you, the, your letter to me mentioned the mountain, mountain lion. I saw the name for the first time. If you remember, I sent you a note asking for an excuse to go to the call edition and the website. I went to the website and saw it for the first time. Okay. The Martin Lion uh, oh. or stuff. Okay. Okay. But it was vague. It didn't say who was the leader. Because I was interested in knowing the leader of the Martin Lion. Because okay. if that if the leader of the Martin Lion is clear, it means he has to be bigger than me because I'm superintendent. No superintendent, not me would not submit myself to someone lower than me. So I want to know who, who was the leader of the Martin Lion that I am allegedly a member of. That, that, that's the question I ask. Who is the leader okay. of this Martin Lion that I'm allegedly a member of? Okay, thank you. Uh, you admitted this Martin and to disable yeah. the bridge. Yeah, I destabilized is, the bridge. You destabilized the bridge. Yes, I did. Was that an administrative action or a military action? It was a humanitarian action. Sir. It was a humanitarian action. It was action. a humanitarian action. And you ordered your men to destabilize? No, they were not men that I ordered. The council met. The council? Yes. Which council? The superintendent's council. The superintendent's council. Who met. And we reflected on the situation of 1993. And so I was urged, say, so you can't sit down here, the people come and meet us here. They will slaughter us. We need to go across. Those of us who don't be part of this war, we need to go across. So I said, but then what do we do? 
we had to stall the coming. So it was a singular action of the council without instructions from Monrovia. No, Monrovia had nothing. I said I take full responsibility for that. I didn't ask Monrovia to save my people. The last my people were at stake. I didn't have to ask Monrovia. I take full responsibility for this. Oh, man, if I'm even going to be killed for this, I take full responsibility of breaking that bridge, dismantling that bridge. Okay, thank you very much. During your tenure, there was full-scale war in the southeast, Maryland County, including the state of Maryland County. Yeah, the state of Maryland in Africa. Can you tell us who was the head of the government forces in the region that uh, prosecuted the war? So it was so confusing, I didn't even know. Very confusing. Everybody was a general, everybody was a lieutenant at a particular point in time. And we had to thread our line as civilians. We couldn't ask too many questions. So can you point to some of the prominent generals, the prominent leaders, the different units, militia, I don't know AFL. them. Oh, you don't know them? I don't know them. And you were the superintendent? Oh, yes. What was going on? You took effort to dismantle, to destabilize a bridge to protect your people. Yes. There were forces of the government there to prevent the incursion. And yet, as superintendent, no, you had no idea. No, from the government. We, what I said, I will repeat. We felt that the forces of Moda were moving too fast. And with our people sitting now on the border, being denied the opportunity to go across, the alternative we had was to dismantle this bridge. So and your, so your people met, didn't even use that bridge to go across? No. Because of dismantle. That bridge, that bridge is, is far, far away from uh, Kavala River. The bridge is uh, in a place called Webu, going out of Webu, Nyanyake, right around it. One bridge. So did government have any military unit in Maryland to forestall the advances of Model? Yes, government had. Can you speak to the structure? Who led the forces? How well, many you, men? The government, government had the ATU there and the armed forces of Liberia. ATU and AFL. Yeah. Can you tell us the command structure of ATU there? No, I can't tell you. I don't know. I'm not you don't military. know. I'm not a military man. What's for the armed forces of Liberia? No, I wouldn't know either. Command structure? <laughs> I know. A superintendent of Maryland County, a civilian, civilian representative. I don't know the command structure. The I mean, and I mean, the president it's, it's not fun, eh, Mr. Boyer. We smile, but I'm very serious. I knew how to stay alive, what to get involved in, and what not to get involved in. So you didn't know General Sumo? If I don't know General William Sumo? Yeah. I added in William Sumo? Of course I know General William Sumo. Was he in the region at the time? Well, William Sumo has been in the region from the time I knew myself. Even before I became superintendent, General Sumo has been in the region. The period you became superintendent, was he active? Uh, active in which case, sir? Did he ITP prosecute the government's offensive against Model? Sir, I can't give you the direct definition or job description of General William Sumo because I have never seen his authorization or his SOP or whatever. You know that's is. not what I'm talking about, sir. The superintendent is the head of the county. Uh -huh. The superintendent represents the president. Yeah. The superintendent is the civilian. The mm -hmm. president is the civilian. Yeah. The military is subject to uh -huh. the civilian authority yeah. of authorities that are well constituted. Mm -hmm. I just want from the perspective of the superintendent for us to understand. Yeah. Let me see, we spend a month and a week in that region. Mm -hmm. Prior to the entire commission going, we had our field agents who went and took statements and did investigation. Yeah. They brought back feedback on what obtained during the period. Mm -hmm. As an authority, the purpose of the question is to get the perspective of the authority what was happening. And what I'm getting is that you didn't know. No. You played very safe to make sure that uh, you and your people were safe and out of harm's way. And so the military operation that was going on was far removed from your authority. Yes. Notwithstanding, there was a need mm -hmm. to disable or destabilize a bridge. Yes. And you took the lead in that. That was a need to. And during the course of the war, that seems to be the only action you really took. Uh, my action? Look, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the, the area, Maryland County, was extremely calm during the period because we're so far away from Monrovia.
from 1999, uh, we were very far away from Rover. There wasn't any major incident in Maryland County that okay. uh, would have led to some armed insurrection before the murder situation and the LBC okay. situation. So I couldn't test the waters on that. All right, but there were any people who were supposed to be something. Yeah. Okay, but I can't be for sure who this individual represented or what he was supposed to do because they don't even tell you when you come to find they say the book I knew man yeah man that's it you don't question yeah. it okay first of all P SWAT P P SWAT P SWAT I've heard of a P SWAT uh, I hear P P SWAT was the commander of EFL in Robo G that's what I heard Okay. Siko uh, Dalia? No, I don't know him. Never heard? No, I don't know him. First of all, Mr. Fawaz, the head of Meridian Wood Processing Corporation. Yes, I, I, I know Abbas Fawaz very well. Abbas Fawaz? Yes, very well. His company operated in Maryland? Yes, in both Maryland and River G. In both Maryland and River G? Yeah. Siko Dalia happened to be an employee at one point in time and he was head of the workforce he represented the workforce to uh -huh. the management and later on he became a militia man mm -hmm. during this period does that refresh your memory in any way with the Zico Dalia? Zico Dalia. No, that doesn't refresh, it doesn't refresh me. Okay. First of all, Richie Watkins no, I only got to hear about Richard Watkins in the submission of the Special Investigation Commission, which I have here. Oh, yeah. Conducted by the Ministry of Justice. Yeah, oh. Richard Watkins is there um, for the sake of uh, people here. Let me tell you where uh, the name Richard Watkins come about. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Martha Watkins, Richard Watkins, Hillary Watkins. These are all names here. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Emmanuel, Kate, G. Williams, Massa, Moses. Yeah, okay. these are names that appear in the in the Special Investigation Commission. Did you, thank you, did you during that period as superintendent ever came to be informed or aware of the movement of arms in that sub-region, Maryland, River G, especially the activities of Mr. Fawaz, there are sweeping allegations that Fawaz was bringing arms for the government in exchange for resources in that region, anything? Well, look, uh, Fawaz was a businessman in Maryland uh, that I knew very well. That's how much I know about him. If he was involved in arms trafficking, I cannot say. I was not aware. And if I knew, I would tell you yes. I knew at this particular point in time, Mr. Fawaz was engaged in A, B, C, and D. Again, I said I will not speculate, sir. Okay. Were there any excesses in the exercise of your authority as superintendent during a period of war that you can remember? <laughs> <laughs> sir, again, I don't claim infallibility. I made some mistakes in the execution of my job as superintendent, and I regret it. And I apologize to everybody who I heard during that process. Can you remember some of those mistakes? Some of those mistakes? They were too small, man. They were too small. They were too small. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what mistakes we, we, we're talking about. I, I, I hope I could give more clarity on on some of the mistakes I made. Because even uh, you, Chairman, you, you, you make some mistakes in life. Um, I don't know how much mistakes that I would have made, but I'm sure I can sure remember, I I can remember a lot of the small ones and the big ones. Well, you know, sometimes uh, mistakes are given to people based on on character. You know, uh, you big, you get big mistake. You small, you get small mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, sir, was there any time during the period you served as superintendent, especially during the incursion of Model, mm -hmm. that you received direct instructions from your boss, the president? in terms of um, wearing off the war, in terms of
government's offenses against the rebel forces, anything related to the military activities of government in that area? The answer is no. Okay. But also I would like to tell you that at that particular period, uh, Mr. Taylor and I were not on good terms. We were fussing. And most people know it. That I refuse to answer certain questions because I was not general. Nathaniel Williams could be the one of the person to tell you. He was in River G at the time. Yes. Oh man, Nathaniel Williams. They even call a meeting on me in the port. You see, there always this mistake, uh, sir. That people always think we couldn't think for ourselves, or we're not even given the opportunity to think for ourselves, which isn't true. We talk for ourselves, and so we're not going to shape responsibility. Certain things we said, no, we're not going to take it, we're not going to accept it, we didn't accept it. So I'm not going to shift blame on anybody. No, I got no instructions. Everything that I did, the breach, I did it on my own. So there were some orders from Mr. Taylor that you refused because you were not a general. <laughs> no, uh, carry, carry me back. Look, yeah, I, tell you the question was, I just want you to refuse? clarify certain things. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'll give you one typical example. We're just not people who was yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. I can remember one incident. Uh, he, the guy is around. His name is Tu. General Tu. General Tu, yeah. yeah. William Tu. Oh. William Tu was order arrested. And when I heard it, I asked by whom. Somebody said to me that somebody told President Taylor certain things and Tu must be arrested. And I said Tu will not be arrested. Because the weight of Tu being arrested in Maryland County will be felt by me. Tu got his men too. So I went for Tu and I carried him upstairs to my house. Those who know where I live when I'm superintendent, I live in the upstairs building. And so when Mr. Taylor called me that evening, he said, oh, so you refused to take my order? I said, no, sir, chief. I didn't refuse to take your order. But I said that what I hear Mr. Tu has been accused of is not true. And nobody has asked me as superintendent whether this was true. And there's going to be a fist fight in the street here. And I would have been the one to address it. And that's the reason why I say I will keep two upstairs. You can ask, ask two. She will tell you. These are examples. Just typical example. Not disrespecting the authority, but at least standing your grounds on issues you believe in. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you, sir. Dan Marias, <laughs> the testimony before the commission has just come to an end, and you have the opportunity to make a last word if you so desire. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> I'd like to do my conclusion in, in writing by reading from it. My conclusion. Though you haven't yet, before I conclude, though you haven't yet taken uh, notice of the fact that one of my accusers is being indicted for child trafficking, as we speak to you, Martha Watkins. She's being indicted now for she, child She trafficking. was arrested in, 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 in Grand Jeter County's bedroom, taken before the magistrate court and, the, and charged for child trafficking with 26 children. Oh. I wonder you haven't heard this on the radio. I heard about 26 children. Okay, all right. That my accusers, they're the same people. Okay. Okay, I want you to take notice of the character of the enemy who are accusing us. In conclusion, though I have yet to face my accuser and I pray that one day the judicial process will grant me, I feel relieved that an opportunity has been given me to provide an antithesis to the thesis of my accusers. This opportunity affords me an outlet to speak the truth and thereby unchained my mind, my body, and my soul from the guilt of my alleged victims. 
and the truth I have spoken to and nothing but the truth to the best of my knowledge if I have lied and think I have lied to men there is a greater force who commandments states amongst others thou shalt not kill unquote and let king and mark forever but I feel relief and light for he who washes over us knows the truth and has shielded me from the tongues of evil minds I have tried to conclude on these notes but the wet blood of my county and state men and women beckons me to remember them killed in cold blood only because they could not run and I pray for one minute of silence to these persons Amen <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Charles B. Cooper killed in cold blood in from the house Professor Blue Martin hacked to death in pieces in Kaloke Maryland County Mr. Joseph Dix who was dismembered head through x -well. Mr. Emmanuel Eskin Senior Mr. Sammy Hodge who bought a pass we collected in Wibara and found a burial a bur a place for Mr. Henry Hammer the mothers in Callaway District, Manalu, whose children were pounded in murders only because they cry. Old ladies whose intestines were used as gate at the junction of Doloke and the stench from the container at the port of Harper, where my people were jailed and suffocated. I speak to them only because I wish somebody could answer and give us some knowledge of why these things happen some information as to why these things happen who can be asked why several homes were completely burned down on water street left and right to name a few Neil, Yances, Hammer, Coopers, Marais etc etc why the shrine of Maryland was burned and been asked to a con for a breach why nobody has accounted for the burning of the Harper City Hall the administrative building the museum amongst others we hope we can know who were the ones involved in these truth and justice cannot be greater only if the alleged corporate is a big name likewise no crime is petty and others greater i pray that somebody must made to account for this atrocity against the people of maryland finally as a political activist and in my youthful exuberance and in the execution of my mandate as superintendent of maryland not a mass murderer i may have offended people that I would like to publicly apologize to and for. I would like to apologize to my participation in the events of history, knowingly or unknowingly. Because if I spill water on anybody in that process when I thought I was right, I'd like to apologize to them. These have brought this country to its knees. Again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to provide the antithesis to what the te to whatever thesis you have received. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. Thank you very much, Honorable Dan Marias. Uh, in response to a question, he has said you speak to it in your conclusion. Yes. Specifically as to LPC. So were all these actions and murders, especially in Kawiyake, yes. committed by the LPC? Yes. Okay, sir. Yes. 
and they're not then Marais and no one can prove it, the entire people of Maryland County can stand witness to Including the burning of the town hall. Of the city hall. The administrative of building. the museum. Of the, the museum. administrative building. Of the imprisonment of our people in the continent that suffocated and died at the pool of Harper. Yes, indeed. It was the LPC. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I want to thank you for coming and assure you that you have contributed to this process. And I was glad you made the emphasis that uh, it is the duty of all patriotic citizens to make contribution to such an effort. So thank you very much, and we gladly receive the documents you have for us. Thank you, sir. The hearing officer is thank you. We take a break. There's another witness. It's two o'clock. Mr. Witness, if you are here, we we beg your indulgence for a one-hour break, so that we resume at three o'clock. Yeah.